Hey, interweb, it's uh, Matt Brown here of Matt Brown's Guitar Studio and the band Dead Parade, and we are going to do some more from the One Hot Minute album from Red Hot Chili Peppers. So this is the song Coffee Shop. So uh, this one is in the key of E minor for most of it, um, and we are in standard tuning. So let's let's go back to the beginning and talk about the beginning. Uh, the beginning of this song uh, just has uh, um, a guitar that's tremolo picking an E note. Uh, so that E note is located at the ninth fret of your third string. So uh, if you're going to play this live, what I'd suggest doing is maybe the last measure where you're tremolo picking that E note, do like a slide um, on beat four to, to get into the riff. So, uh, you know, you're not going to have a, an opportunity to, to jump from here to here, you know, unless you have super huge hands. So something like that. Also uh, going on, there's an overdubbed guitar part, um, and it sounds like what he's doing is that, you know, like maybe like, you know, um, actually that's probably now that I think about what he probably did. Um, that sounds more like it. So he probably just punched his guitar like that, which is going to cause your low strings to vibrate. Um, then maybe like fretted, I'm hearing a G note in there. Um, so he had to have fretted that note there. Um, so, uh, you could do it at the second string as well. You know, you're going to get the same G note sound. Anyway, that's going to slide out and now we're to the, the main riff of the song. So what we have here slowly is... So, you know, it's just a combination of uh, these chords, not palm muted, and the palm muted uh, low E string. So that's all that's going on there. Um, the other guitar part is uh, doing kind of this weird, uh, noisy type background thing that I'll explain now. All right, so what we're doing here is uh, uh, we're playing uh, just on beat four of the first measure. So we're playing um, basically a, an E5 power chord. So what we're doing is uh, four on your third string, then open second string and first string. Uh, I'm doing this with my middle finger. And then what's gonna change is the note on the third string. So that's going down to the third fret. So you get this like, uh, you know, sharp 11 chord sound. Uh, then what he's doing is just sliding, and it sounds like he's, he's targeting roughly about the 12th fret. Then you're going to do like a, uh, an upstrum mute, you know, roughly the first couple of strings. Uh, then that little chord chunk there. Um, so this is the 14th and 15th frets of your two high strings. So it's kind of implying like an E minor 6 uh, sound over the, you know, the riff that's being played by the guitar and bass. The other guitar, I mean. All right, so that takes us through uh, all of our verse parts. So um, now let's talk about the chorus part. There's two guitars for that. So that's the, the first uh, guitar part. So let's uh, go through chord by chord what's going on here. Uh, first we're just going to use power chords, and now these are three string power chords. So first one is A5, that's 5, 7, 7. We're going to go just 1, 2. Um, then we're going to go 3, again. Uh, so this is a G5 here, three strings, 3, 5, 5. And then this phrase ends with an E5 power chord, 0, 2, 2. Um, so what we're going to do here is like a little lick that's going to imply an E7 chord. Um, so what that is, is your low open string. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you're going to slide in from 6 and 8 on your, uh, your third and second strings up to 7 and 9. And give a little slide out there. Alright, so let's put that together slowly. Alright, um, and then the, the next thing we're going to do, it's a, a variation on the first phrase. Alright, 
All right, so what that is, we're doing the A5, C5 instead of the G this time. And then we're coming back to the E5. I'm fretting this like an E minor chord, and the reason being is uh, after we play the, the power chord, you're gonna strum the two high strings here, so. It's just a little easier on the left hand if you do it that way. Um, then what we're gonna do third time is we're gonna switch to four string major chords. So basically um, just, you know, your, your, your bar chord shape, but we're not gonna be strumming the high two strings, so. So that's the first bit. We're gonna go F, or sorry, F. Uh, it's A to G to F sharp. Now the next part we're gonna go. So we're going back to the G, and then we're gonna do an F sharp seven chord. And this chord is played two, four, your fourth string is going to be muted. Uh, I wasn't hearing that note in there. It gets a little bit too uh, muddy if you strum that string. And then you've got your three at the third fret and five at the second fret. So. All right, then the last uh, chords that we're going to have, we're going to come all the way back up to the C5. And then this uh, guitar track uh, is going to do octaves after the, the C chord. So we have... So we're, we're climbing up the mixolydian mode, the E mixolydian mode in octaves here. So five, uh, and I'm just going to call out the uh, sixth string note of these octaves. So octaves on the sixth and fourth string, we're sliding from five to seven, uh, seven to nine, you know, um, Five, seven, nine, ten, and twelve are the locations. Is how it sounds. All right, so let's uh, talk about the other guitar track during the chorus here. I'll play it for you first, then uh, explain it. Right, so this is kind of just like the same thing but simpler. Um, so the power chords that we're doing and all the chords in general that we're doing are the same. So at the beginning we have and instead of doing this fill all we're gonna do is you know just strum that E5 power chord. Uh, same thing the next time. So here we have So the, all that is the same, and the only difference is instead of doing the uh, type active things, uh, we're just going to go. So with some uh, light pop muting there on the A5 power chord at the end. All right, let's uh, uh, let's see what's next. It's going to be uh, the first bass solo. So uh, I'll show you the guitar part over that. So uh, effects-wise, what uh, is going on during this first bass solo is um, there's a delay on the, the main guitar track, and it's set to an eighth note delay. So you can either do this one of two different ways. You can set uh, a metronome up. Uh, this one I clocked in at exactly 120 beats per minute. So, you know, just get a metronome going and set your delay time on your delay pedal to, you know, sync right up with the eighth notes. I usually just, you know, smack some muted strings and then you're gonna hear the echo, you know, and then in that way you can hear, um, you know, how your delay is set up. The other way is uh, if you're working with uh, a delay pedal or in maybe like a, you know, a digital audio workstation like Pro Tools, you can just set the milliseconds. So um, there is like a, a mathematical equation, you know, if you're playing at 60 beats per minute or 120 beats per minute, um, you can figure out, um, you know, the, the millisecond um, breakdown of that and then figure out how many milliseconds you need to set your delay pedal to. I won't go through the mathematical equation and bore you, uh, but it comes out to roughly around 234 milliseconds. So, you know, if you're going to go that way, just do that. Anyway, the chord that's being played is just like, uh, you know, you can think of it like a little chunk of an E minor 7. <laughs> So uh, what he's playing is the 12th fret, it's uh, the 4th, 3rd, and 2nd strings. 
uh, you know, just on the first eighth note, and then the delay is giving you the repeats, bam, 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 you know, like that. Uh, the second measure of this figure, you're going to do the at the beginning of the measure, then uh, this little chunk of an E minor 7 up here. That's what it is slowly. So uh, that's just the 15th fret. I'm doing it with my pinky finger. Uh, then the next two bars are just the um, and then those four bars repeat again. So if you don't have a delay pedal, there's there's something you can do here. You could just like, you know, slide out of the chord. And then maybe throw in some little pentatonic licks to fill for the, or compensate for the fact that you don't have, um, you know, uh, the delay carrying on there. So like, maybe something like that or, you know, something like that maybe. Anyway. Um, let's, let's get on to the next part. Alright, so this isn't exactly easy to play. Um, Scale-wise, what he's using is uh, mainly the um, a combination of E Dorian and um, the uh, E Mix Lydian modes. I don't think Dave Navarro knows that though, so he's probably just thinking of combining E uh, minor pentatonic and major pentatonic. Uh, so the the beginning lick that re uh, repeats throughout this idea is uh, that's the idea. So it's a real simple kind of cliche funk type. Uh, you know, mixed Lydian or Dorian idea. Um, so we're doing an E uh, octave here at the seventh and ninth frets. Uh, the other notes are the seventh, sixth uh, frets, and then back to the seventh frets. Um, okay, the lick that we're gonna do is this is just E minor pentatonic right here. So this uh, fifth fret, then we're bending the seventh fret back to 5th fret and then 7th fret on the low string, so. The next lick is, so that's 9-7, then 11-12, then uh, the main ideas. Uh, Dave Navarro, uh, he plays the wrong note, and I don't know if it was uh, accidental or meant to do it, but he plays 3 to 5, it should be 4 to 5 like that. Um, uh, so then we have, we're gonna slide into a G sharp, the sixth fret. Then we're gonna do a D and a C sharp on the third string, seventh and sixth frets. Um, then we're gonna do a seven, five open pull off on the fourth string. And we're back to the main leg again. So what we have here is the little E minor 7 chunk, low open E, and we're going to slide this implies an E7 sound from 11 and 12 up to 12, 13. Then this idea, sliding 6 shape, you have 9 and 7 on your 6th and 4th string, you're sliding down a fret on each string, then coming back up. this is we're playing just power chords so that is a G5 and an F sharp power chord so that's 10 12 12 and then 9 11 11 and then what the ending is is octaves so I'll, I'll break down the locations here before I play this it's um, these are on the fifth and third string so um, I, I'll just say the uh, fifth string note it's 11 12 14 and then um, it concludes at 17, so, uh, so I'll just do this slowly for you. Alright, so if you were playing, uh, you know, just one guitar and playing this live, um, 
you know, slide down or something on beat four, kind of like you did at the beginning of this song to get into the chorus. All right, so the chorus is the same. Uh, all I have left to talk about is the final bass solo, which happens, you know, um, from the end of the this chorus to the end of the song. So let's let's talk about that. So that's the, the what the main guitar is doing, and it's it's the exact same riff as the the main verse riff. Instead of um, though doing the the two eighth notes of the G five chord at the end, you're just gonna fill that in with four extra sixteenth notes. So that's the only difference. Um, the other guitar, um, what it's doing is kind of these creepy little things. Uh, kind of a, a neat little background figure here that he, he thought of. So what these notes are, it's the 15th fret of the high string, and then 14th of the third string, and then when it repeats, it's the 14th fret of the second string. So uh, there are some kind of like, I don't know how you describe it, like almost like sampled guitar sounding stuff that happens at the end, but um, knowing him, I'm, I'm guessing he just did with his delay pedal and kind of set it up to kind of like repeat, but um, those notes are just the A and B flat on your third string at the second and third frets, so that's what's making those kind of noises towards the end of the track. All right, so uh, that does it for, for Coffee Shop. I really doubt that I'll, I'll ever teach the bass lesson for this one, just I'm a guitar player, not a bass player, and this one's probably uh, above my pay grade, so. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, if you'd like the tabs, just uh, shoot me an email and we can talk about that. Um, but yeah, please subscribe and thanks for watching. I'm Matt Brown and uh, please hit the like button. You'd be amazed what that does for me. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys around.